As we saw with the shifter rotator circuit, sometimes uh, we have similar enough functionality that we need out of a circuit that we can combine two totally uh, separate functions into a single circuit uh, because they really are quite similar. Well, in this video, what we're going to do is look at how we can make circuits that add and subtract numbers. And because of their relationship, uh, subtraction being the addition of a negative number, uh, we're going to see how we can also converge those two circuits into a single adder subtractor circuit. To begin, let's look at how we cover basic addition of two bits of information. Uh, so we're going to take a of 0 and add it to 0, a of 0 and add it to 1, uh, 1 plus 0, 1 plus 1, uh, and, and that's what we mean. So if we have two bits of input that we're going to add together, we're going to get two bits of output. We'll get the, the sum bit, and then whatever we carry up normally when we're doing the horizontally aligned uh, numbers and doing addition uh, down, starting from the right and moving to the left. So really we get a 2-bit number because uh, we could, we're counting how many 1's there are, basically. So we could have 0 1's, which in 2 bits is 0 0. We could have 1 1, which is 0 1. Here we have another single instance of a 1, so we also get the sum of 1 when we add 1 and 0, or 0 and 1. When we add 1 and 1, we get 2, and 2 is the number 1 0. So we have 2 bits of output, uh, one is traditionally written uh, as the sum, and the other is considered the carry. Now, I have a little subscript of an O, not a zero, and that stands for carry out. So we're carrying out. Uh, if we've got such a thing, we can look very quickly and see that this is exclusive OR. So if we want to make a circuit for the sum, we just introduce an exclusive OR. And now, by exclusive ORing A and B, we have the 2-bit sum. For the carry, the output column is 0, 0, 0, 1. And that's just an AND gate. So we introduce an AND gate between B and A. And that produces the carry out. Now why do we call it the carry out? Well, we call it carry out instead of just carry, because we may have a carry in. Keep in mind, that what we've looked at so far by adding two bits, uh, this circuit is only useful if we're adding two bits. So when we have two numbers written out horizontally, the only time we add two bits is the least significant bit in the top and bottom number. Every other number after that, we have the chance of adding the two bits along with some carry that came from a previous part of the addition, a carry that has cascaded to the left. Well, uh, this circuit is fairly simplistic, but we don't want to draw larger circuits that add um, uh, two bits at a time across 8-bit or 16-bit numbers using this kind of thing because it gets ugly really quick. So traditionally, uh, we draw a circuit that looks like this. We just make a little box. Our two bits are coming in. A sum comes out in the bottom, uh, sort of in line with the concept of adding numbers that are aligned horizontally. And the carry out, if they're uh, the carry out will go off to the left to higher digits. Now because this particular circuit doesn't deal with the, the possibility of carrying in, and we only use this one when there is not a carry in, uh, we call this a half adder circuit. And we signify that this box is a half adder because it's got an HA. Uh, it also doesn't have anything coming in on, uh, on the left hand side, which could have been a carry out from a previous adder circuit. But that's just for two bits. If we wanted to cover all the remaining bits in our 8, 16, 34, 128-bit adders, then we need to deal with adding three bits at a time. So let's figure that out. Let's figure this out. There's uh, two columns of output. We'll do a two-bit number. That's the sum of each of these rows. So three zeros in a row is the number zero. Two zeros in a one is one, so zero, one. Two zeros in a one. 0, 1. A 0 plus 2 1's is 2. A 1 and 2 zeros, well that's 1. 1 plus 0 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 1 plus 0 is 2, so that's 1, 0. And 1 plus 1 plus 1 is our biggest number, 3. All right. Okay, so now 
we need to develop a circuit for this. Once we get to this point and we're bringing in the carry in, we now have what we'll call a full adder. And a full adder is visually distinct from half adder because it's labeled with an FA instead of an HA for full adder. Uh, but it also has coming into the left a, uh, a line for the carry input. Uh, and then all of that goes in through the logic of this truth table to produce the carry out and the sum. What we need to do now is develop that logic ourselves. But it's actually not very hard because adding three bits together, adding A and B and the carry in, is really the same thing as adding A and B and then taking that and adding the carry in. So when it comes to, for example, the sum bits, uh, all we have to do is exclusive or, same way we did before. So I'll add A and B together to get a uh, sum here. But I will additionally take that result and add our carry input to it. Now I have a sum. To calculate the carry is also uh, relatively similar. If uh, we take a look at the truth table, we can see that when the carry in is zero, uh, we still have the original stuff that we saw out of the half adder. This is just an and. So we're going to need an and to determine whether there's a carry when we add the first two bits. Uh, but then we add the result to this second, uh, to the carry in. So the first result gets added to the, to the carry in. And it by itself could have a carry. So we, we might get a carry from the first part or we might get a carry from the second part. And so much like we have two exclusive ORs, we're going to have two AND gates, uh, like this one here, that each produce a carry for the first and second halves of the partial sums. And if either of the carries, if either of those partial sums produce a carry, then the total output of our circuit is also going to produce a carry. So that means we have an AND gate for the carry coming from A and B. And then uh, we're going to OR the output of that with an AND gate from the sum of the first two bits, A and B, being added with the carry input. So the way I'm going to do this is drop a line here and make it an input to an AND gate. Wow, that's a skinny AND gate. I apologize. Uh, and then we'll run this input over here to the carry in. Then we have our two possible carries. And if either of them, there's an OR gate. If either of them produce A1 as output, then we're going to get A1 in the full output. And this is our carry out. I've run out of space on my paper, so I'll just label it this way. And so there we have a full adder. And with a combination of a half adder for the low order bits and a bunch of full adders uh, all in alignment after that, uh, we can make pretty easily an addition circuit that adds arbitrary numbers of bits sort of all at once. So let's look at that. Here on the top, we have such a circuit. This is a four bit adder circuit. So here I have two 4-bit values A, bits 3, 2, 1, and 0, and B, bits 3, 2, 1, and 0. The two low order bits go into a half adder uh, and produce the low order bit of the sum. And the output, uh, the carry out from that half adder goes as the carry in to the first full adder in the bit 1 position. So we add these two bits and the carry in and produce a sum and another carry out and so on, all the way to the end of this 4-bit adder where we still have an additional carry out. Now that can be used as a flag for different low-level programming purposes, and it can also be used in combination with uh, the resulting sign bit to determine whether or not overflow or underflow occurred. Um, but we're not going to go into that here. Now this is a pretty nice little circuit, uh, and it's fairly intuitive, but the only really weird thing is that we have this half adder at the end, and then all full adders everywhere else. So that's all right in this 4-bit 
job, but if we had a 128-bit adder circuit, uh, we'd have an awful lot of full adders, which we could buy on the cheap because we were buying them in, in volume. Uh, but then we'd have this lonely half adder. So it only seems natural that we instead replace uh, the half adder at the end so that with a full adder, so that all the addition units in this circuit are full adders. The only problem with this, of course, is that this full adder needs an input of some kind. So uh, we could do something simple like run power or ground to it to get uh, a 1 or a 0 as input respectively. Now, of course, if we're running a 0 in, that's basically like saying add A0 and B0 plus 0, which works functionally like the half adder up here. Uh, so adding 0 is quite natural, and that at least gets rid of our half adder. But we could always put a 1 here coming in on the, on the carry in. But that would mean we were taking these two numbers and adding them together, uh, and taking that and adding one more. Now, uh, that may seem like that's not useful, but one of the situations in which we add one to a number fairly regularly is when we're doing two's complement negation. And remember that subtraction is really the addition of a negative number. And so uh, if we wanted to take A and subtract B from it, what we would need to do is invert B, which we could do by just putting little inversion bubbles right here at the inputs of the full adder and running B straight into that. So that would be the inverse of B. We could run a 1 into this last full adder. That would be adding 1. So invert the bits, add 1. Now we have negative B. And then we add A to that with what is otherwise an addition circuit. And then we have subtraction, A minus B. But we don't want a separate adder circuit and a separate subtractor circuit because they're, you can see from uh, the layout of this paper, they're basically the same kind of thing. So what instead we can do, uh, since we're not going to be using this one circuit to add uh, and subtract simultaneously, we're going to be choosing one or the other operation based on the next instruction we have to execute. We can convert this into one that's uh, converged, so that it can do either based on a control line. So we'll need a control line, one for subtraction. I'll put that here in red. So we'll add a subtract line. Ooh, add a subtract line. What a horrible thing to say. But we've got a subtract control line here. Uh, and we're going to bust this across the circuit uh, to be used for whatever our filthy purpose is here. But whenever we subtract, this is going to be a 1. That's why it's called a subtract line. If we're not subtracting, this will be a 0, which will indicate addition. So what I can do here is drop off a line uh, from that bus uh, right here as the carry in to our lowest order full adder. This way, if I'm not subtracting, aka adding, I will be uh, putting a zero on the subtract line. That zero will come into the full adder, and then it'll work just like a half adder. I'll also have to ensure that when subtract is a zero, I'm getting all the normal versions of the bits of B. Uh, but when subtract is a one, I'll be adding one, and then I need to get the negation of, or I'm sorry, the inversion of all the bits of B coming into these full adders. So the way we can deal with that is by introducing uh, multiplexers right down here at the input to each of our full adders. Remember these uh, trapezoids? Our multiplexers and they go this way. I'm going to label the inputs 0 and 1 because this is going to be, each of these are going to be a two input multiplexer. 0, 1, 0, 1. And the output of those multiplexers goes into the full adder in the same way that the bits of B do in a traditional adder. So what we need then is to get this data from B down uh, when we want it. So I'm going to connect as a control line. I'm going to connect the subtract wire to each of these multiplexers. And then we have to rethink what 0 and 1 means on the subtract line. So when subtract has a 0 on it, we're not subtracting, we're adding. 
And in the case of addition, I just want the regular bits from B to make it on through. So I'm going to run the wire from B, each bit of B, right down into the zeroth input of each of these multiplexers. However, when uh, the subtract line has a 1 on it, we're going to need the inverse of B, and then that 1 will come down in here so that we're adding 1 to the inverse of B, that's negative B, and then we add A to that, and that's A minus B. So to get the negative, all we're going to do is constantly run a drop off of each bit of B into an inverter bubble, into an inversion bubble that goes into the other input of our multiplexers, the input where the subtract line is 1. And that's going to give us, when subtract is set high, ah! This is not correct. I put this, <laughs> I put this bubble in the wrong place. This needs to go right here. Horrible, horrible live editing. But let's do it. Let's take care of it. The magic of the whiteout roller. And no one knows what happened. There we go. Uh, and then finally, the last one here for B3. <laughs> and now we have a 4-bit adder subtractor circuit. So by identifying uh, logical functions that are similar, uh, in nature or have similar components, we can often converge their circuits into a single uh, circuit. But we must use some kind of control lines to indicate which of the different operations we intend to use at this particular moment. If you've got any questions, leave them below. Uh, and I look forward to providing a, a great new circuitry video uh, for you in the future.